Axis Design We have covered the introduction part Next we have covered the limited state of collapse or flexure These two topics we have already covered. Today we will start a discussion on limited state of collapse. structural members do not lead to the immediate failure of the structures but reduces the structural strength of members considerably Therefore, the design for shear is considered as a part of limited state of collapse because the shear failures do not lead to immediate failures but it reduces the compressive strength or the structural strength of the members considerably. Therefore, it is considered a part of limited state of collapse. Now, if you look at the shear force in structural members, it can be generated either due to flexure, torsion, or it can be generated due to the punching. So, therefore, accordingly, the uh, shear stresses are known as flexural stress and torsion stress and punching stress. So these three are part of shear stresses. Now if you look at the flexural stress, this we have already seen in strength of material topic. So flexural stress is developed due to the change in bending moment. given by V is equal to that is my shear force due to the changing bending moment is given by Vm by Dx and corresponding to this shear force the stress is known as flexural stress. Second is torsion stress it is developed due to In detail, we will see in the next chapter. And the third one is the punching stress when a concentrated load is acting on thin member, then the stress corresponding to that concentrated load is known as punching stress. So these three are the type of stresses that are developed due to the shear stress. Now we will start our analysis part. Let's take if I am taking a beam, simply 
be supported beam and if any element I am considering below the neutral axis let's say this is my element A so if I draw three body diagram of this element since it is below the neutral axis therefore tensile stresses will be acting and shear stress will also be acting so I assume the bending stress acting on this beam is given by sigma and the shear stress is given by tau so now I will consider two cases two very important cases first is when bending moment is equals to zero so as we all know for simply supported beam bending moment is zero near to the supports so this case is near to supports and if you look at this part maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress is given by the formula sigma by 2 plus minus under root sigma by 2 whole square plus tau square so this is the formula for calculating the maximum principal stress and minimum principal stress here sigma is the bending stress and tau is the shear stress so if I consider this case when bending moment is equal to 0 that means sigma will be equal to 0 so if sigma is equal to 0 then sigma 1 that is my maximum principal stress will be equal to tau plus tau and minimum principal stress will be equal to minus tau and the formula for calculating the direction of principal stress is given by tan 2 theta is equal to 2 tau by sigma it is given by 2 tau by sigma x minus sigma y in our case sigma y is 0 only sigma x is present therefore tan to theta will be equal to 2, 2 tau divided by sigma so when sigma is equal to 0 when sigma is equal to 0 tan to theta will be equal to infinite or I can say theta is equal to 45 degree and theta is equal to 135 degree so one of the principal stress will be acting at 45 degree angle and one of the principal stress will be acting at 135 degree angle by analysis the maximum principal stress acting at 45 degree angle and minimum principal stress acting at 135 degree angle so now the bending moment is 0 near to support and sigma is equal to 0 so from here what I can say the maximum principal stress is acting at 45 degree angle now if I draw the this is my beam so near to supports the principal stress is acting at 45 degree angle therefore the propagation of stress will be at 45 degree angle to the horizontal so this is going to be the profile for the development of the shear now this corresponding to theta 5 theta is equal to 45 degree principal tension will be acting since the bending moment is 0 therefore for theta is equal to 45 degree principal tension force will be acting and for theta is equal to 135 degree
principal compression force will be acting. Principal of resistance will be acting. So the angle with the horizontal is approximately 45 degree for these cracks. Now since we all know concrete is very good in resisting the compression therefore for principal compression we are not supposed to design any of the structural member just we need to take care that the tau c value or the shear for this shear for which we are designing the structural member should be less than the tau c max value because at very high shear stress the crushing of the concrete takes place only that we have to take care this we will see in the next video now for theta is equals to 45 degree principal tension will be acting and concrete is not good in resisting the tension so we have to provide the structural resistance across the developed, developed cracks so if my cracks are developed in this direction then across the direction of these cracks I have to provide the steel in the form either in the form of bent up bars or steel ups. So this is the first case when bending moment is zero. Now we'll consider the second case. When bending moment is equals to maximum. So for simply support beam bending moment is maximum at mid span. As we all know, at the mid span, sigma will be maximum and tau will be zero. Why? Because the shear force will be zero at the mid span. Now, from this formula, when tau value is zero, then sigma one will be equal to sigma. And sigma 2 will be equal to 0. So the maximum principal stress only acting at 10 to theta is equal to. If I put tau equals 0, then I will get 10 to theta is equal to 0. Therefore, theta will be equal to 45 degree or 135 degree. Sorry, theta is equal to 0. Then, 10 to theta is equal to 0, theta will be equal to 90 degree and 0 degree. So, we can see the propagation of the cracks will be at an angle of 90 degree with horizontal near the mid span. So, as we move from the supports to the mid span, the direction of the cracks will be changed from 45 degree to 90 degree. So these cracks are developed due to the shear force and these are known as shear cracks and these cracks are developed due to the maximum bending moment so therefore these are known as flexural cracks. This is the difference between the shear cracks and the flexural cracks. So this is about the when bending moment is maximum. At a time flexural cracks will be developed at an angle of theta is equal to 95 degree with the horizontal and this happens when bending moment is maximum. So these are the two important cases that we discussed. So based on our discussion, we will classify the type of failure due to shear. So first type of failure is principal tension failure. This I have already explained, it happens when the bending 
training moment value is very very less and it takes place at theta is equals to 45 degree angle and bending moment is approximately zero shear force is i next is principal compression takes place at an angle of 135 degree bending moment once again is very very less and shear force is very high and third type is flexural shear failure shear forces or we can say approximately equals to zero so these three are the different different type of failures due to the shear stress and if you look at the shear stress profile across the cross section of the beam this is my beam cross section As per IS code, how the shear stress profile varies across the cross section, we have to consider only up to the tensile reinforcement. Up to the neutral axis, it varies parabolically, and after that, it remains constant till the depth of tensile reinforcement. So, this is the variation profile of shear stress as per IS 456-2000 and here it is parabolic and here it is straight so this is the distribution of shear stress across the section of the beam. So, so far we have covered about the introduction of the shear stress and in the next video we will be starting our design part of shear stress.